It was silent. I was like, no one knows who I fucking am here. Shit. <laughs> scared. This is Roy Choi. What's up, y'all? Um, Roy, your restaurant local was just named the restaurant of the year by the LA Times. Congratulations. Yeah. Um, that's, a, that's a big deal, not for me as a, as a chef or as an ego or my partner, even for our creativity as, for food, but it's a, it's a big deal for the city of Watts. And for, um, you know, Jill was up here talking about a lot of people of color and trans and uh, on the outside, um, you know, Watts has always been a community that has been marginalized not only by politics, but by, by economy, but also by the media as well. You know, so there are only certain narratives that have been told about Watts, um, usually related to gang violence or crime or poverty. And um, so for this to win the award, if you, really, if you really know the community of Watts or Compton or South LA, you know that, that that's not everything that exists. So for this to win the award, now what it does is it changes the dynamic and it changes the, it changes the infrastructure of what it means to be a great restaurant. Because that, that model was always predicated upon usually, you know, kind of a, I don't know, I guess, a, an ego-driven concept of what we term, what we deem to be uh, intellectual or creative. But now the standard for what a restaurant of the year is has to include social mission, purpose, um, identity, life, um, and the journey itself. So, The social mission yeah. of Local is very much at its core. You and your partner, Daniel Patterson, have two and a half locations now, one in Watts and one in Oakland and a, a bakery. It's like a bathroom at a house, two and a half bathrooms. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> one and a half restaurants. Um, so the, where do you expand that social mission? You're here in Southern California, Daniel is in the Bay Area. How do you move this social mission beyond the places where you live? Well, the first goal of local itself was to do it in California because of our locations, because he is in the Bay Area and because I'm down here. But as we've grown with local in the last year and a half, we've realized that it's way beyond us. And we really want to move it past who we are as chefs. Um, a lot of the story has been written about us at the forefront, like we were mom and dad driving the bus. But, uh, and no one talked about you know, the people in the bus. You know? so, uh, but what we've learned is it's not about us. It's about the communities. And uh, we were maybe just a moment in time and two people that were at a certain moment where we were able to offer something that we had spent our whole life learning and mastering, which is cooking and caring for people. So right now, my dream for local is to, um, is to go to every inner, inner city in America. Um, but you can't, I'm a, the way I live my life is um, I, really, I really focus on every single moment. I guess it's because of the way I'm trained as a chef, where um, you can't look at the whole dinner, you have to look at the mise en place, right? And then the mise en place, which is your prep and your detailed determines the dinner itself or determines the evening or your lunch, which you're about to have. Um, so each step, as I look at it, um, first it's Watts, then it's Oakland. But then if we can perfect those models or if at least we can gain some momentum, then those can go out to Detroit. And maybe what we can do is create a kind of a system and an infrastructure within the, the folks that are within our family, then they can go out to Detroit and South Chicago Baltimore, West Atlanta. Um, our, biggest, our biggest dream is beyond food now. It's, it keeps growing every day. It, it, it's really about wealth and prosperity, you know, um, and it's about changing everything. Because the thing that I wake up to every morning that, that drives me is I don't want to wake up 20 years from now and see our inner cities and see our communities in the same exact place 20 years from now. So I don't know how much a hamburger shop is going to change that, but I know at least it's, it's something better than nothing, you know what I mean? So at least it's 30 jobs versus zero, you know? Um, you know, a lot of people look at markers like 1992 here in Los Angeles and 1965, um, and they use these things as bookends for where things were and where things, how good they've become. But if you look from the inside out within the communities, 
1965, 1992, 2017, to me is still the same shit because there's still no jobs. The educational system is still being stripped of its resources and the food and the, the processed food and the chemicals are still being infil infiltrated in. So my question is, if you, really, <clears throat> if you really dissect it and look at it, you know, this is a moment in time where we can, we can shift everything. So again, that, that's what drives, that's what, because it's hard. On top of everything else, it's, it's hard, you know? So I try to wake up every morning and, and, and really think about like, you know, if we start with 30, you know, then it can become, you know, 45, then it can become 90, then it can become 300, then it can become 900. It can become two cities, then it can become five cities. That type of stuff, if you break it down that way, it becomes a lot more manageable and a lot more realistic. And then this vision that you see in this dream and this kind of future that you imagine starts to become a lot more attainable and, and reachable versus um, something that seems so large. But scale at the level that you're talking about is predicated on the product itself selling really well on everybody wanting to eat it. And over the, the year, year and a half that Local has been open, you've been tweaking the menu a lot and you've, you've been very open about the fact that what you and Patterson went out wanting to feed these communities was not necessarily what the community, the individuals in the communities wanted to be eating. How do you balance giving people what you want them to have with giving them what they want to be given? Yeah, I mean, it, and it, that, that whole thing, it goes a little bit deeper than that. Um, that's definitely one facet of it. And, and that part of it was we were being too chefy with it. You know what I mean? Like we came out, our first burger, we came out with uh, charred scallion relish and, uh, and lime, like, you know, lime fermented mayo and uh, barley and quinoa and uh, farro in our patty with seaweed and uh, meat garum and uh, fish sauce. And, That's an easy know, sell. <laughs> yeah, it's an easy sure. sell for four bucks to a 16 year old kid, um, not. <laughs> um, so, but that we were being too chefy. And again, and, and then through the journey, maybe if we didn't let go of our ego, we would have continued to try to one up that recipe, right? But instead, because we're surrounded by the community of Watts and West Oakland, um, we, we can't do anything but listen, you know? And by listening, what we do is we adapt ourselves and we go back to the basics and we go back to our soul and our core. And, um, and we look around us, just as if I was to feed all of you in this room. Um, which you will be doing later which tonight. Which we'll be doing later. Kogi will be here later. But I have to look around and, and feel the energy of the room. You know, and I have to feel the energy of the neighborhood. I have to feel the energy of the people. And through that energy, we can decide how we switch and change things. The other, the other facet to that is that those that aren't from the community of Watts or West Oakland, a lot from our food community and, and from the journalistic community and bloggers and, and people who, who are very um, quick to find new things and, and then maybe place their judgment on them very quickly and almost as if you could, you could do it, experience it, and then put it away into a file as if that whole experience was, was something that you could conquer in a sense. And it's like um, the checklisters. The checklisters. And, yeah. and so in that sense, every, a lot of people wanted local to be perfect out of the gates. And it was hard to explain that um, how could it be perfect out of the gates, you know? Um, you're talking about communities that have that haven't had any resources or development in 50, 60 years. And all of a sudden, you know, you want this thing to be, to impress you, you know, on day one or day three or even day 31. And what, what we realized in this year and a half is that local was, was this development and this, this kind of like, I don't know, I, I, I look at it like, uh, it, it, it's almost like, like a single A ball club, you know, in baseball. You know what I mean? Like we're we're taking a bunch of folks that have become our family, that have never had any training before, that have been excluded from a lot of life, life's benefits that a lot of us here in this room are able to access, and and we're putting them into that environment under those under those same under that same scrutiny under those same circumstances, and so. There needs to be a little time for, for the team to develop kind of the sea legs and the knowledge base to be able to shine. 
the rate at which they've shined is a year and a half. Now imagine you were thrown onto another planet and then had to survive, and not only survive, but excel, live up to everyone's expectations, the Martians' expectations, and then beyond that, you, and then be number one. You know, local did that in a year and a half, but it's been, it's been a rocky journey, for sure. So in, in, in a recent profile in, in California Sunday, Daniel Patterson admitted that local isn't making any money. What needs to change? People need to show up more, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You know, uh, you? Um, it's not far away. It's just like you know, uh, uh, and again, some of the haters wanted to say, oh, we're not cooking for the community, but they're not living in Watts every day like we are. You know, um, it's not that Watts doesn't want to support Watts. I mean, local has got so much respect within Los Angeles, with, beyond Los Angeles, within the whole country, not only with, within the streets, on the blocks, not only in the neighborhoods, not only amongst the homies, but also all throughout the jail system, all throughout the, all throughout the, everything, you know. Our nickname is called Local Jays. You could go to any state pen in this country and ask about Local Jays, you know. And, but the thing is, the reason why the community can't support it is because again, there, there's no money, right? When, when you talk about no money, you're literally talking about, you know, you're, you're literally talking about one dollar in your pocket, maybe, right? So. So, our, so, so everyone within our neighborhood loves local and protects it with their heart, but they can only do so much. And then, and then Watts is pretty far from a lot of the rest of Los Angeles as far as where the, the urban you know, like, uh, e economic zones are, as far as like, you know, all the creatives who really love it are on the west side. Financial people are in downtown and Century City. You know, so it's hard to get there for lunch or after school. Um, so what, what I'm thinking about is maybe local, the first kickoff of local was this hamburger shop, this, this old fashioned transaction between, hello, I'll take a burger and, a, and this, and I'll pay you my money. But I don't know if that's gonna sustain the actual, I think the mission has become larger than the transaction. So um, I, I, I think what, what we're trying to form it into now is maybe some form of it can become nonprofit, um, and then and then still have the for-profit zone to allow time. Again, what's happening is it might be a little too ahead of its time in a sense. So we need the we need the economy to catch up to it a little bit, so that people can spend money. Because in order for people to spend money, they need to have jobs. They need to be able to open bank accounts. We need to change our system to where people can open bank accounts, um, and we can't penalize people for things they've done in their past. So all these things, I think, need to catch up. Um, so one thing we're thinking of is uh, maybe some viral uh, economy, some ability to create nonprofits, and then, and then we have our mobile business, which is our truck, and then um, getting that to continue to go out and do parties and things like that. Cool. Well, Roy, if everybody here wants to go spend a lot of money at local, yeah, and, and I, I really want to, um, I don't mean to be so serious, but it is an important thing to spend money at local because none of that money is coming to me, you know. Uh, it, it is, whether it's Watts or whether it's West Oakland or as we go to South Chicago or Detroit, the reason why it's important to spend money is because not, no one's spending money in these communities to begin with, right? You know, and so it is a good thing to spend money and share this money with the communities that need it the most. Because then what we're doing is we're gonna, we're gonna start spilling the beans and everyone will start to be able to access more things together. So if you do have a moment, instead of wasting that $3 or $5 or $12 on something that has become so mundane and commonplace for you, take a moment and spend that money where it's really needed because it will, it will have an effect, you know? 